Hello and welcome to the Library Drawing Party. Today we're going to be drawing these beautiful geese. To get started, I'm going to take a black tipped pen and I'm going to draw the head of the gray goose. So I'm starting with a half circle that comes down into an S shape for the neck. You can do this with a number two pencil to start. Then I'm going to draw the beak, which is this triangle shape that has a line coming up. And then I'm going to draw this backwards S shape again. And I'm going to draw in the eye. Then there's a half circle behind the neck for the body. And then there's a half circle underneath that doesn't quite connect because we just have feathers. You can draw in the feathers. So there's a bunch of half circles. In layers, I have two layers. And then there's some longer feathers behind that. These are like half ovals. And it doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to draw over this to keep it from being too uniform. And then the bottom of the body, some of that's getting cut off, so let's come back to that. And then there's this tip coming up here. And it comes down to the base. And then let's draw our second goose. So we have a neck, but his neck is bent. Or her neck is bent. It's coming down to touch the grass. So we do have a little bit of a curve, but it's a little bit distorted because of the way of next bending then we have the beak and the eye fix the beak a bit and then we have the body which comes down and then Hoops up a bit, and then you can actually extend the neck out a bit, and it's fine. There's just some shadow. And let's add in some feathers for the tail. And the rest of the body. Let's add in some shadow near the belly. And then the feet. They have pretty long feet considering the body. And there's one in the background, almost like square shapes. And 
All right, now I'm gonna go back to my first goose. I'm gonna fill in the neck a bit more with that gray color. And I wanna see the texture because this is all gonna be feathers, so there's definitely gonna be a lot of texture here. And then it's going to have some curved lines at the bottom. Okay. Take our orange and fill in the beak. And the feet. The feet also has some brown in it, so I'm going to take some brown, put a stripe down the middle, and some underneath, especially in this back foot for some shadow. You can put a little shadow in the beaks. I'm going to go back and take my black tipped marker and draw in the grass, which lines the lake that the geese are sitting at. I'm going to do some cross hatching technique here. So I had lines going this way. I'm going to change it and have the lines going the opposite direction. I'm going to take my green and I'm going to add in the grass. So I'm doing short strokes, short vertical strokes. Although some are going to be diagonal, show that the grass isn't perfect. And this will give us the texture of the grass. We want to do this all the way across. My sample drawing, I did a slightly lighter green. This is a slightly darker green. You can experiment with what green colors you like. You can even add in some flowers. Perhaps they're having a snack. You can be a bit sporadic because the grass is never going to be completely uniform unless they're at a golf course and perhaps in that case. If this is a park, it's going to be very natural. So, so there's going to be grass patch here, grass patch here, grass patch here, grass patch here. So you can just have fun with it. The main thing is to keep those vertical lines because you want the grass to be growing towards the sky. For our lake, we're going to want a nice peaceful lake, so we're going to have horizontal lines. I'm using a light blue. If you only have a dark blue, you can use that. You're just going to want to press lightly. I'm going to take some brown and add that in 
to our grass. I'm going to add that in random patches to mimic nature. So you can see the dirt coming through or if there is just a brown patch of grass. Add in some shadow here for our goose. Add in some shadow for other goose. This will help get rid of some of the white background without losing our texture as well. You can use your number two pencil to add in more tone for first goose. So all the parts that had texture, I'm just going to go right over. And this will help give us that gray background color without losing any of the lines that we worked so hard to create. You can try some other colors too. You could try brown, many different shades of brown. You could try black. Alright, I'm going to darken the neck a bit. And I want to emphasize some of these feathers, so I'm going to darken some of my half circle lines in the body. And I also want to darken the head. I'm going to use the full force of my pencil. Then I want the underbelly to be lighter, but I am going to put some shadow here. And I'm still going to use my number two pencil and I'm going to add in some shadow to our second goose. This will fill in some of those lines that we drew with our pen. We don't want to fill it in all the way. It's just going to give it some extra shading. Give it some texture. Put in some more shadow underneath the feet. Perhaps a bit more by the head. Now going back to the background, let's take a darker blue. And let's blend that darker blue in to our light blue. This will give us some more variation and help smooth the colors out a bit more so we get that nice peaceful lake scene.
We want to go right up to the edge. We don't want to have like a halo effect around it. I'm going to actually make the edge a little bit darker. Help separate it from the grass. Take your brown and add that along the edge like a beach look. And then blend that out into the grass. You want to have a little bit of a sandy beach edge, you can use some yellow and mix that in. And mix some yellow in with the regular grass. This will help give you some light patches. And by adding all of this variation in the color, your eye wants to move around the page. You can use a different green and mix that in. Again, this will help break up the grass, keep it from being too uniform while still blending the colors in and eliminating some of that background color that's still peeking through in places. Just want to blend in the water a bit more, make this a little bit more cohesive, but you're more than welcome to leave it with the strokes being visible like I did in the sample drawing. I'm using finer lines in my second drawing. I want those lines to be reflected in the lake. And even add in some brown. Keep it from getting too blue. Or green, maybe there's a bit of algae growing in the lake. This will also help tie in our grass. So I want to have some more definable pieces of grass. So I'm just going to put in some dark vertical strokes with my green pencil. I'm just going to scatter them throughout. So it'll give us some more texture. You can also use your pen that we used for the geese for individual lines. So want to make sure that this is a pretty organic process and that you're adding lines without making it look too uniform. This will help tie in the line drawing aspect to the rest of our drawing. You know, even add some horizontal lines to your lake. 
I want to emphasize some of my shadows a bit more. I'm going to go back over those lines that we did with our colored pencil with my pen. Really emphasize the beautiful long neck of the goose. Maybe you want to add a couple of rocks along the edge here. So I'm going to add in a square and then uh, some more rectangular shapes around it. And I'll put a circular rock over here. So I keep these from looking too uniform. Every rock is going to have a unique shape, unless it's hand carved, but these are just rocks out in nature. You can use your number two pencil to really bring out a gray color. And then to keep the rocks from looking too random, you can add in some smaller pebbles along the shoreline. Perhaps there's a big rock here and a little one next to it. Maybe another big rock here, another little one, maybe a little one this way. You can experiment with your drawing. You might want to try different things every time you do something. Maybe the geese would like to perch on the rock. Maybe he's investigating a rock. We'll put rock right here. have some over here and we have a big one in the corner here you can use rocks for inspiration you can go outside go to your local park and look up rocks online there's so many different kinds of rocks You can really have fun with it. I'm going to take my number two pencil and color those in a bit more. Get that nice gray color. And even do some gray rocks. And there you have it. Thank you for joining us in this week's library drawing party. We hope you enjoyed drawing geese. We have library drawing parties every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And keep being creative.